Hey y'all, and welcome back to another video in our Procedural Generation Basics or Procedural Generation for Beginners series. I'm Matt Mirafish, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can spawn objects into an irregular procedurally generated environment and have them correctly positioned and rotated against surfaces. We're gonna do this using a technique called ray casts. Let's check it out. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna take a look at how to place items into an irregular environment and how to have them be aligned with that environment. We've got our little robot over here and we can see that he is positioned on this kind of ramp and he's oriented correctly, right? He's not sticking through it. He's not sort of misaligned with it. He's aligned with both feet on the ramp and so he's kind of rotated a little bit. So the way that we're going to do that is using what are called ray casts. So a ray cast in short is a kind of an invisible ray fired through the space that we can use to detect where objects are. Right? So what we're doing is we have our item spreader which is based on our previous video and we're going to spawn 10 items across an x-axis spread of 10 units a y-axis spread of zero. Now importantly, this spreader object is placed 10 units above our geometry. And that's important because we're going to kind of fire rays down to hit the geometry, detect where it is, and then use that to find positions to place our objects. And then we're going to spread 10 units across the z or z-axis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be spawning these item spawner aligners, right? So this is a prefab, and this is basically an empty object, and all it contains is this ray cast item aligner script, right? So this is the kind of important script uh, for this tutorial. So what we're gonna do is, let's open it up to look at it in Visual Studio, and what we can see is in start, we're calling this position ray cast function, right? That returns void. And then we're gonna declare a raycast hit called hit. So a raycast hit is a struct which stores information about where our item was hit. We can get some things like the normal, meaning the angle of the surface that we hit, which we're gonna use in this case, and some other pieces of information. And you can take a look in the Unity documentation for everything that's in raycast hit. But it's a pretty useful, this combination of using a raycast and a raycast hit is a pretty useful combo in Unity and particularly in uh, procedural generation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, if physics.raycast. Now, physics.raycast is gonna return a Boolean if the ray intersects with a collider, right? So it's a yes, I hit something. So if it just fired off into space and hit nothing, it would come back false and none of this would be executed. So we're gonna say if physics.raycast, we're gonna start from transform position. Now this is gonna be our random position 10 units above our geometry. Then we're gonna use vector3.down for the second argument saying, okay, we're gonna cast a ray down in world space. So this is in the, not using the orientation of the object itself, because maybe the object is rotated for some reason or whatever. We're just gonna cast down in world space we're going to use the out keyword to assign the values to our raycast hit struct. And, and basically the out keyword is a way of creating kind of an additional or second returned value from a function. And then we're going to pass in raycast distance, which in this case is a public float we've exposed in the inspector. I'm doing 100 units. That's massive overkill here. We could really do 10 or 11 units because we're, we're 10 or you know 10 units above the, the geometry. So then we're gonna declare a quaternion called spawn rotation. And this is gonna be equal to quaternion from two rotation. So I'm gonna use quaternion from two rotation to calculate the difference between vector three dot up, right? The world space up direction and hit.normal. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, get me the difference between the angle of the object that we hit. We can think of the normal as basically a line pointing perpendicular away from the surface that we hit. I'm going to get the difference between that and up. 
what that is going to give me is the amount I'm going to need to rotate my little robot in order to orient him correctly on the surface. Then we're going to declare a variable of the type game object called clone, and we're going to instantiate it by passing in the get public game object variable that we've declared in the inspector object to spawn hit dot point now hit dot point in this case is the position in world space it's a vector three of the object that we hit or or specifically of where our ray cast hit something in the world right and then we're going to pass in spawn rotation the rotation that we just calculated to apply that to our instantiated object so when we do that we can see with all of those steps completed, we end up with our guys rotated correctly. Now here, he's a little funny, right? Let's take a look at him. So he got rotated, his foot got a little rotated into the ground because probably we hit this, we rotated based on this ramp and then he's a little rotated into the ground. So it's not a foolproof system. Probably the most foolproof system would be if you did a ray cast from each foot and positioned each foot, right? These are barely feet, they're just little boxes. So it's not super sophisticated, but uh, it's good enough to get us kind of things. And you could use this for placing foliage or placing power-ups or basically placing anything that you wanna place onto a surface with a plausible rotation. Now you can see here, these two guys got spawned. We can see a little Z fighting going on here. These two guys got spawned into each other because there is no checking for overlaps. And these two guys are really close together. So we could actually do that in another video of how to check for an overlap before we would spawn one of these things. And maybe I'll do that later on in the series. But that's a quick overview of how to use a Raycast to get a position and a rotation in the world and then instantiate an object there. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be releasing videos, hopefully weekly is my target. We'll see how that goes. Covering these kind of procedural generation, indie game development using Unity. So hopefully you found this valuable and thanks again for watching.